Hello, algebra students. Directions here say simplify or indicate that the expression cannot be simplified. And as we've talked about many a times, simplifying is obeying the indicated operations. Basically, read the signs and do what the signs tell you to do if you can. Sometimes, as we know in algebra, you can't. Let's look at the first example. Actually, look at all four, all three, I mean. <laughs> I can count. I'm a math teacher. I can count. But looking at all three examples, you're going to see they look a little different than the things we've been practicing. But you guys are my experience level students you can handle. We're going to take those rules about addition, subtraction, and multiplication that we've learned, and we're going to combine them into some problems that maybe we haven't seen anything quite like this before. So first example says nine times the quantity of t minus seven. I say quantity because of this grouping right here minus 3t. Now, I hope that you can see that there's a lot going on in this example. We are simplifying, meaning in theory, we are following the order of operations here, handling any groupings first, operations inside of groupings, then any exponents, then any multiplication division, then any addition and subtraction. And I do have a grouping here, but I can't start there. As we know, we can only add and subtract like terms. T and negative seven are not like. One is a T term and one is a constant term, a plain old number. So I can't do the grouping. Now there's no exponents, so time to start multiplying. We do see the multiplication where nine is shoved up against this grouping here, but be careful. The multiplication stops when the parentheses stop. And so you're going to do 9 times t and 9 times negative 7, but you are not going to pass that 9 out to the negative 3t. Let's start. So 9 times t is 9t. And 9 times negative 7, when you're multiplying, we read that as negative 7, is negative 63. And then you say, well, what about the negative 3t? Well, nothing's happened to it. It's still there. And as always... After you do your multiplication, you should check if there's any addition or subtraction you can do. And I do see some. I see like terms. 9t is a t term, and negative 3t or minus 3t is also a t term. And so I can combine those. Now remember, I'm adding subtracting now, so don't go 9 times negative 3. That's 9 minus 3, and 9 minus 3 is six and I was adding and subtracting t's so I have six t. Remember my exponents don't change when adding and subtracting. And now I just have the one constant term, the one plain old number, it will just drop. Six t minus 63 is my final simplified expression there. Let's look at this guy over here on the right. It says five p plus p times the quantity of p minus 2. Once again, I'd like to start in the grouping, but mm, I can't. <laughs> p minus 2. Um, p and 2 are not like I can't combine them. I am going to have to do the multiplication instead. Now, when you multiply, think of that like a positive p you're multiplying with. So positive p times p is positive or plus p squared, right? We use exponents to talk about repeated multiplication, repeated factors. And then positive p times negative 2 would give me negative 2p. And what about the 5p? Well, what about the 5p? You just drop it down. It wasn't part of the multiplication. But now that my multiplication's done, I can do any addition or subtraction. I do see some like terms that can combine. Um, usually we will write p's or x's or whatever variable it is with the highest exponent first. So I'm going to just put p squared first. If you put the p term first, you're fine. You're not wrong, okay? And then I'll do my p's. So 5p minus 2p is, uh, what is it, positive 3p. I was about to put minus 3p, you guys. It's been a long day. So p squared plus 3p is the correct answer and the normal way we usually write it. Um, but 
of course, if you have 3p plus p squared, yours is correct as well because they both still have the same sign. Nice. Okay, now let's look here at this last one. You know, let's clear this up so it's not so crowded. All right. Take a look here. We have six times the quantity of K minus five minus four times the quantity of K plus one. Once again, as much as we'd like to, if we tried to go within these groupings, there would not be any simplification we could do. We can't do K minus five, not like. We can't do K plus one, not like and there are no exponents here. So once again, we're gonna do our multiplication. Now this six is multiplying with this grouping and this negative four, we read it as negative four when we're multiplying, is multiplying with this grouping. So let's do that multiplication um, first and we can do them both since they don't share any numbers. So six times K is six K and six times negative five is negative 30. And now, remember, keep your sign, keep your sign, keep your sign. Negative 4 times k is negative 4k. And here's where everybody messes up. Negative 4 times positive 1 is negative 4. And now we've done our multiplication. Time to do any addition or subtraction I can do. And I do see like terms. There's a k term and another k term. So 6k's I have, and I take away 4 of those k's, I'll have 2 k's left and then negative 30 pick up the sign in front of it minus 4 and you can do it in your calculator but do remember that we're adding subtracting right now so use minus 4 is negative 34 those two terms aren't like i can't do that subtraction i am done all right you guys Woo, that was nice. That was a good review. Super proud of you and uh, happy learning.